Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Ohio Guys here. I'm Christian Ocampo, and today I'm joined by another voice actor in the scene. We have Melissa Modano. How are you, Melissa? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Doing great. It's uh, a, great, uh, a great Saturday to get to uh, interview you, and I believe it's going to be your very first one. Yes, this is my, my first interview. So I'm really excited to finally meet you and be on the show. Also, I want to let people know that uh, it is very stormy where I am. So it may sound a bit ominous <laughs> at times. <laughs> That's okay. So uh, got a few questions I'd like to ask you to get us started. So uh, first of all, what? is like working in the industry today? Well, today, especially with all the craziness of 2020, it is um, very interesting and very unprecedented. But thankfully, um, recently we've been able to get back to the studio and that's the, the beauty of voice work is that technology now allows us to still stay connected and to still get some work out there. So. It's been, you know, we've had to get creative and the studio has been doing a really awesome job of um, making us all feel safe and for us to, um, you know, be able to continue to record. So it's been really good considering. No, definitely. Uh, it, like, I've had another interview before, uh, another actor saying like how the industry is trying to adapt, you know, with, with all the... Uh, with the quarantine and the way studios are recording, it's a different ballgame right now. Yeah. And and it's funny because like I've been very isolated in this time. So it's like getting to go to the studio like really lifted my spirits because I get to like see people. But it's funny because it's like I see them, but we're like behind glass. <laughs> and so it's like we're in person, but we're still behind a screen of sorts. But But it's been fun. It's been really good, I think, for all of us. Yeah, um, good to hear you guys are doing well, however you can in these times. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so during your time in this industry, what is your, your favorite show you have worked on? Oh, <laughs> hard you one. know, it's so hard because, um, you know, I, I know I'm gonna, it's going to sound like a cop-out answer, but I, I really just love each of them in their own way. They're all so, like, unique. Um, but... I guess to give a sort of answer, I do really love, and maybe it's because of this very reason, but the the shows where I've really gotten to spend a lot of time with the character. So like uh, Golden Time and Snafu are ones that I've really gotten to spend so much time in their world and grow with them and, and just see like what they're gonna do next. So I've really loved that. Definitely, I'm, I'm excited to guess about those shows in just a moment as we uh, make our way through our list here. So just to kind of like traverse back in the last five years, four years ago, since you start coming out in the industry, uh, what was it like working on uh, Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun? It was okay. If I'm, and I, I'm just going to be real. I, I will say that was intimidating because it was my very first one and I you know I come from a theater background where it's like obviously in that work everything is live and it's like you see everything happening around you so coming into this new world of like voiceover and like not seeing the other actors and also on that one I was the first one to record so it's like first time being in a voiceover studio first one to record so it's like I put on the headphones everything's in Japanese and I'm just like have a really just no sense of um <laughs> how like am I on the same page am I doing this right you know and I was also much younger and you know cause it was like five years ago so I was really like am I doing this right? Or like, you know, and really counting on, thankfully, um, you know, everyone at the studio was, was very encouraging and kind. And, um, and so it was fun. And like, also with Mamiko, it was very like, there were no flaps to follow. So that was a different aspect as well, where it's like, I'm just seeing her, but like, just sort of using a lot of my imagination. Um, and 
but I have to say like with that one, you know, it being my first one, like when it was all put together and getting to see everybody and like watch the full episode, that was magical. So it was sort of this thing that started off like exciting and daunting. And then it was like, oh my God, this is just beautiful and amazing and fun. And I really like, after that, I was like, I want to keep doing this and I want to learn more on how to do this. Um, it, yeah. And so it's so awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. It's uh, another fun one. I enjoyed it. was very different just with the whole, the way the whole romance genre was kind of turned on its head. It yeah. just, it just the quirkiness, like just things you were kind of expecting. And then, and then they pulled the rug underneath your feet. I like that. That was, that was great element. Yeah. And it was like, um, you know, I, I believe we had a, a screening for that one. And it was like, I got to meet um, the other actors involved who are like more experienced. And, um, it, and it was just, it was so cool and so fun. That show, that was a good introduction to this work. Definitely. So another older show you got to work on, this one really uh, turned some heads when they came out. Uh, want to talk about 27 what was like working on that show yeah so i believe if i remember correctly that was like the first time where you know i got to like see the character in action of like you know the mouth flaps and like and that was a totally different like mood you know like so that was very um oh sorry my dog <laughs> is very upset about how it's gonna be storming it's thundering a bit over here um, so you may hear her. She's very <laughs> sweet, but she's, yeah. And then you probably hear the thunder as well. She's very um, scared of storms, but <laughs> she'll be okay. Um, but yeah, that that was that was really cool as well. And 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 just got me like, <laughs> just got me further intrigued about um, just the different. Um, uh, what do you? How would you even call this? I guess like genres um, within. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one, this genre is called harem, and it's just, uh -huh. it's, it's one of those shows, you know, especially with newer actors who have gone to the industry, like, trying to make heads or tails, like, it's just a bunch of girls just having this, this chemistry with the, with the one male, so it's, it's interesting genre just to be part of. Yeah, yeah, and just kind of, like, seeing how it all unfolds. Yeah, and this one, no reason why I think it's special is this was when Sentai and a bit of Kyle Jones were the experimented giving the new uh, the new names in the in town a chance, you know, to uh, to star in like as as main cast members. So you were in it, yes. and a bunch of others, you know, who were new. And there were some veterans thrown thrown there to bounce it out, but you know, you you have a uh, Cameron. He was the one that was the main, the main lead for this yeah. show. The animation was great. You know, I'm still hoping for more 27. I'm a big fan of it. So I know there's a movie that's out, but has not been dubbed. So hoping that since I will get around to that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hope so too. It'd be really cool, especially like since it's been a few years to kind of see, get back into that world. Yeah, so we'll see what happens in the next year or two. Mm -hmm. All right, so the other show that you know we really just touch upon, another show that was kind of experimented on with another fresh, uh, fresh names that got starred in this one, which is called When Supernatural Battles Became Commonplace. So tell us what it was like working on that show. Oh my gosh. So that was my first time getting like, uh, you know, a, a more like prominent character in a show. And so once again, it was like um, a bit daunting. Um, but thankfully, you know, Kyle Jones is just so much fun to work with and he's very encouraging. And, he, and um, so I was very aware of my like, I was kind of like, are you sure? Like me? Because I was so new. Um, 
but like I immediately fell in love with Hatako. She, uh, I love her so much in that show. And what was cool as well with that particular one was that, so that's the one that yes, Mateo uh, played Ando. And we're both from uh, like a theater background. And what's like so crazy and coincidental is that like we both were uh, working on that, but at the same time we were actually doing a play together. So at the time of like recording that, it was like a lot of Melissa and Mateo time where it's like we'd hear each other at the studio and be like doing supernatural battles. And then like in the evening we're doing this play where we're playing like high schoolers Sorry, she's very upset, but but where we're, we're playing like high schoolers, um, uh, it was a play called I and You. So it was fun. It was like, you know, and I think for both of us, we were just so excited to get that opportunity. And it was such a just a fun, another like fun show. Um, and also how their relationship, like they're so close, you know, and like, I, I think it was just really special for us. Um, yeah, and it I loved it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, again, another fun show, like, just just focus on, you know, you guys that were the main leads, and then later on, we got to see other characters. You know, it, it was also kind of like a good transition from newer actors, even Bryson Boggess was in it before he got into these other shows that, that, he, was, that he was main casting in. So I, it was a smooth transition for most everybody, you know, trying to get their feet wet in this show. And then when newer shows start coming out, then you guys got to be cast in those shows. So I think it was a well thought process, you know, both on Sentai side and with Kyle Jones side. Yeah, definitely. And it's so crazy to like look back on that and kind of see how everyone's like grown so much and like all the like things we've done since then, because, you know, I know for me, like I was just so new and, um, uh, and like, and you bring up Bryce and I'm like, gosh, and now he's just so like, <laughs> you know, like he's, he's awesome. He's like in so many cool things. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And you wouldn't even not know he was in that show it's until you watch like, oh, okay. You know, this is like, it's actually one of his first shows before yeah. everything else. So the snowball, you know, rolled down the hill from that point. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and now for another show that, you know, has been very endearing to you and also for me as a fan, I really found special. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, my teen uh, romance comedy, Snafu. What was that for you on that show? Gosh, you know, so Snafu, I really look at that show as like such, um, just one that I feel like a lot of my growth happened in um because you know now we're on season three which is like what you know but um like uh, you know like okay so it's like I had done like you know like like supernatural battles and then like after that just kind of little things here and there and then it's like the audition for snafu came along oh my gosh I'm really sorry my dog is so upset it was like so uh -huh. clear earlier in the day and now it's like I guess a hurricane is coming along with everything else and happening in the world um but uh yeah so it's like you know the audition for Snafu and I was really like determined I was like okay I really you know I really want to like get better at this I really want to like grow and um and then it's like this opportunity with Snafu came and working with John Swayze um you know he's really just been so like um encouraging and helpful to me as an actor and really like bridging some of like the technical gaps of like being a stage actor right but then like being able to um yeah like bridge that gap of like being by yourself in like a small room versus like this open space where you like see everyone and um like really like develop a consistent character and um so it just was yeah it was a really big growing experience. I think in the beginning, I was very unsure of myself when I started season one. Like I was of course excited and like pumped, but you know, it, it's like, okay, wow. Like this is a lead, you know? And, um, and she's so cool. <laughs> you know, Like you can know, so cool. And, um, you know, just wanting to like do her justice. Right. Um, and so, yeah. So even like watching back, it's like, I really see how like, 
it's cool to see like as an actor how like you know how you yourself grew through this character but then also seeing the character grow like us being in season three it's like I can't help but think about like you know you can in season one and even me Melissa as you can recording season one and just seeing how we've both grown like season three it's like you know you can know I feel like it's so much softer you know and she's she's so much more like relaxed because the influence of her friends you know and the people she's led in her life and so just seeing the parallels like that like it's just I love that show and and Kat Thomas and Adam Gibbs are just amazing and along with you know it's it's just an incredible group no it is I just like that that whole concept like the whole the whole high school life but they go more of a not so much dark but more of a a more like inner structure of clicks about like you know how how high schoolers like how they kind of like treat each other each other and how like there's like these armament and rules that you got follow or just certain social cues like i think it's really uh it's it, it just something uh, you know as an anime fan to watch like wow like this is kind of heavy like you know you're trying to like figure people out like and figure yourself out too and like your friendships and like navigating that and i i just feel like that's something that a lot of us can really resonate with yeah definitely and like uh, that's why this show stands out and each season like it gets more and more uh i'm not sure if dicey is the word but like it's just you, you just you just get more hooked like it's like okay i gotta see what's gonna happen next like how are they going to get from A to B to C to D? Like that's, you feel, yeah, you feel so much of the build And I feel so, so much of that in this like dub cast now. Like this is my first time doing a dub cast where it's like the episodes are coming out as we're like recording them. So I feel like I'm on the edge of my seat, just like, okay, what's going to happen with us now? Like what, now what are we going to do? And it's really exciting. Yeah, I, I can't wait how season three is going to conclude. Like, and I was happy it finally got dubbed because it was sitting on Sentai's library for what, almost seven years, eight years, somewhere on that ballpark. And then now one, two got dubbed. Then season three got picked up like the, yeah. in the winter time. And now we got the got in dub cast. So it's, I think it's really uh, getting a lot of fans, you know, excited and just having this, this uh, build up like how, you know, how this is all going to come full circle. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, and I don't even know, you know, so I'm on yeah. the, my seat as well. Like I, I'm really, uh, I, it's like, I'm really just so excited to see where this goes. Yeah. So we will get there very soon. Yes. All right. So another show that also stands out in its own way for its own genre that it is we're going to be talking about uh to love rue oh my gosh well, yeah like, talk about a totally other direction right <laughs> of uh, like everything that happened in like snap <laughs> like, <laughs> to love rue is the most wild show i think i've ever gotten the opportunity to play in that was so fun and so bananas like that show was a blast um, and I believe I recorded that with, with Kyle. No, wait, no, I recorded that with John, I think. And, oh my gosh. Yes, it was with John. And that was, um, oh my gosh, like Joseph or Daniels and I, um, one of our like, uh, small, cause like I'm a Shizu, but then I also voiced, um, this like, it's like this alien couple and it's like me and, and Joe Serpa Daniels. And that was so funny um i actually connected with him after recording that because he made me laugh so hard while i was in the booth because it's like we had to talk in unison and he recorded first and the voice he did was like one of the most hilarious things i've oh my gosh and and so then me trying to figure out okay how do i blend with this crazy voice he's doing oh my god it was amazing He's, he's, he's so good. No, he, he definitely is. Like, we were talking about Bryson earlier. Uh, Bryson likes to do Twitch streams, and he would have Joe and some of his other buddies, like Blake Jackson, 
and uh, John Ramirez over. And when they play games, they throw funny voices. And Joe always has the best voices whenever he's doing what, reading for characters on Bill games. Oh my God, <laughs> he's so funny. And yeah, and Blake Jackson, another like crazy talented voice actor who then like recently directed for the first time, which was, oh my gosh, those those guys, they're like, it's, you know, Tula Brew is banana show. It's bananas how talented those guys are too. It's like, it's all just amazing. Yeah, you know, it it definitely is. And just all, all these amazing shows, it's just, I'm always excited to see, you know, who's going to be in it and, you know, what, what you guys are going to bring to the table next. Yeah, and I, and I felt so excited to get that opportunity to play, like, in that silly kind of world, you know, because, like, I had started doing these, like, you know, more, like, kind of grounded like these high school like like we were just talking about these like you know romantic shows so it was really fun to then you know go to the studio and it's like you're an alien you're a ghost like that was so much fun I, I'm so grateful that they they let me play with those guys yeah all right and then uh going back to the going back to the romance genre for this uh very uh unique show uh, what was I working on Golden Time? <laughs> Golden Time? Gosh, you know, yes. Golden Time is like, that anime, I like, I, I mean, you know, and I'm not like the most extremely versed, right, of like all the animes ever, but I feel like it's so unique. Like, I just feel like there's not really many shows like that, like, especially them being in college and navigating, like, just the adult world and like being in their life and like their relationships like um like leaving high school and getting into college i mean i think we can all just really relate on how you change but also like your relationships change and and it's that show is so much about like identity too so there was just like a lot of themes in that show that were just so like poignant you know and and I love Linda so much. Linda is like, there's just, I've never seen an anime character like female like her in any show. And um, so it was really, I, I told Shannon, I was like, thank you so much for letting me uh, or choosing me to voice her because she is just, I, I admire her so much. I mean, she's so pure and she's such a good, like a solid good friend. Like that's like a friend you want to have. Like Linda, I would totally hang out with Linda, <laughs> you know, like, uh, and that show is just so special. You know, it's like, I, I know talked with like Mike and, uh, and many others from that show about how it's like, we almost wish it was like multiple seasons, but it's almost like perfect how it was all, you know, just this like, whole journey that has like this start point and this end point it was so I love that show so much it was, it was really so lovely to work on and, and honestly like that show is actually how I even met Mike Komodo and now he's one of my really good friends and so it's it's amazing like how that show even created new friendships in my life as well yeah it's I loved it you know I it was again another sh another show that was picked up by Sentai like many years ago. Was always in the back burner that was probably not going to be dubbed. But when the dub finally came out, you know, I was excited. A lot of fans who knew about the show were excited, and then get to see your your performance, your portrayal, and yeah, Linda is special. She, especially when the memories, like looking back at her high school life, she was even more mature for a high schooler, and that made her more special as a character yeah like you know and and she was just so so like grounded in who she is and like just really looking out for everyone you know like um because like of course she was very protective of Bonri, but even like the other people she meets along the way like coco you know it's like like there's that scene where it's like coco's like really anxious about you know like performing and she's just like She's just like such this cheerleader, you know, and she's just this positive light that, you know, I, I, yeah, she was like just this beautiful breath of fresh air of a character to play, you know, and, and that story was just so 
so beautiful. Like when I got to watch it, I just was so like, like sucked in, you know, and, and getting to see everyone's performances. Like I, that show is really special. That show is definitely really special. Yeah. And hopefully more fans will see it. They haven't, you know, especially with the watchers. Like, it, again, it's, it's so different than the usual romance uh, norm. Uh, yeah. The way the way I, I feel like I've seen that romance shows like it it does stand out on its own. It it's in its own little ranking where okay this this is a top one of the top twenty top one hundred romance shows that people should definitely check out. Yeah, and I feel like also for people who don't typically watch anime, I feel like that's a show that could be a really good like transition into like exploring anime, right? You know, but then like. You know, I I feel like people who like have never seen anime, it's like they just like don't really get it, you know, mm -hmm. like like off the bat. But I feel like that's a good sort of like segue, you know, for people to kind of like, oh, because it's very it's a very grounded like because of course there's things in there that are, you know, sort of like, you know, magical and, and different. But like uh, it's very grounded. It's a very grounded show, and the the relationships are very grounded. Yeah, no, I agree with you. They're very realistic with its with the elements that it takes. Yeah, and I think everyone can. There's a character in there that everyone can find and identify with. It's a really yeah. good ensemble. Yeah, definitely worth a watch. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, people watch it if you're watching <laughs> this interview right yeah. now. If you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully so. All right. Now we have a show that's really different than all the other ones I already mentioned. And this one is special for many reasons that we're about to jump into. What was it like working on Bang Dream? Oh my gosh. Bang Dream is so cool. Like I, I didn't even know, um, you know, and of course I'm sure some people are like, what? But like, I didn't even know like Bang Dream at all until like, you know, I, I got cast in it and then it's like, it's so much fun. And it's so like, I just think all the girls are so cool. And like a lot of the, like, I'm like, I want to go to these concerts and I want to like, you know, hang out with these people. Like it was, it was so much fun and I recorded, that's one that I recorded with Kyle and we had a blast, um, especially when uh, we went in and we did some of the Walla. And so it was a lot of like, woo, love it. Like we had so much fun. That was a really fun day in the studio for sure. Um, of us just kind of like cheering, maybe kind of like, like, you know, doing the like, wait, what? Like, you know, like Walla and like, um, yeah, that was a fun one for sure. Now it's it's great because I knew about this because there was a mobile game that's been out for a few years now, and then when I heard that it got an anime, oh okay, you know that's that's interesting. And again, it's a anime that falls under the idol group genre, which another popular genre there. Where now you have up to twenty to thirty girls, and now that means you get twenty to thirty actresses go play them and. I've been watching it like I, I, you know, as a guy, I like seeing how a show like this gets to see how girls kind of like get to hang out with their friends, how they interact with each other, like in their own girl way, you know, with their own girl talk, you know, as a, as a guy, like if you saw a bunch of guys, like you see a bunch of guys just trying to close on each other, trying to throw each other off bridges, well, not really, but, you know, just, <laughs> I just rough that, but I don't know what guys do on their own. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's funny like it, it gets rowdy so you know just see, just seeing it reverse okay now we get to see it from the girls like okay you see you know just trying to joke around with each other you know do cute things or like just you know just get on stage watching them perform their hearts out like it's you know it, it's very wholesome just to see them get to you know be part of this idol group uh world yeah and like rock out together like that's just yeah and and also just like the the how different each of the groups are too and like their style and they're sort of like like oh my gosh sophie she's very upset <laughs> um but yeah and like just seeing yeah like the different like like also even like color palettes each one you know and like the sounds like 
yeah it's it's really cool i love yeah that one's really cool nah that not it colors pretty colors from everywhere like their hairs make even more pretty or like <laughs> wow yeah. like, like i've i've seen blue i didn't think blue can be that blue before and that's <laughs> And it's cool actually like in quarantine I feel like a lot of people have been venturing in like the like colored hair trends so I feel like now like in 2020 we're seeing more people kind of explore some of these hair colors you'd only really see in like anime but now people are like you know what like I think I want blue hair you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's kind of cool how that's all now kind of becoming a little bit more common in real time and just to throw us in about just how popular Bangjim is, like, it's so big that I'm a big wrestling person. I'm not sure people out there have seen my Twitter where not only is it filled with anime, but it's filled with wrestling, especially with Japanese wrestling. This year, New Japan Pro Wrestling put the Bangjim logo on the wrestling mat and on the side of the wrestling ring. What? Yes. I did not know that. I got pictures, like, when I saw them, like, wow, like, I've never seen this before. I've never seen a sport, wrestling as a sport in Japan, to put an anime title on their own wrestling ring, like, in the center. And, like, that's that that speaks volumes. Like, I'm happy that, you know, the wrestling world is doing this for anime. Like, you know, you just wouldn't, wouldn't see that anywhere else. That's incredible. I'll have to look that up after. I'm going to like, you know, go I search got, for it on your Twitter after, <laughs> after I, I, this interview. <laughs> I will send you a picture after yeah. we do the interview and I will tweet it to you. I have it saved. Amazing. That is so cool. Yeah, I've been sharing some of the other actresses. They thought it would be cool. You know, I just hope to keep seeing more, you know, anime titles in a New Japan wrestling ring because that, that's just amazing. That's amazing. That's awesome. All right. Now it's time for the funny question that like, we always like to ask. If you could be any character you have played in real life, who you be and you can mix and match? If I was playing in real life or who would I want to like be you, in real yeah, life? Yeah, like certain traits, certain abilities, just anything about the characters. Oh my gosh, that's so hard. Um, yeah. You know, I guess, you know, and it's probably not true. I feel like I am, I'm like already a, a little bit of a mix of, <laughs> of like, you know, Linda. I mean, I feel like Linda is the closest to how I like naturally talk. Um, so it's like Linda, but then I think I'd like to be as like cool. Like, I feel like you can know it's just so cool. Like she's just like that girl that like, you know, she walks in and she just like commands a room. You know, she doesn't even have to say anything. But, but I also really love like Hachiko and her lavender hair. It's just like, it'd be so cool to have like the Hachiko hair. So I don't even know, like, you know, saying all that and like thinking like how that would all combine. I'm not sure <laughs> if that would be like a mess of a human, but it would be so cool because yeah, it's like Linda is just like this fun loving, like, awesome friend you know but then well then now it, it makes me think about bang dream like i would love to like have the musical talents of the women on bang dream so this is um a really tough question because i just feel like all the women in or at least like the characters i've gotten to like play into are just so i fall in love with all of them so i don't know yeah i guess i would really there's not just like one I think I would want to just kind of pull from each one yeah. and, hope, and hope it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, mix and match always helps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like the, like the intellect and coolness of you can know the, the fun of uh, Linda and the enthusiasm of Linda, the like um, sweetness and cooking skill of hot to cow. Um, <laughs> also like her powers too. Like that'd be cool. But then like the musical power of, Pink dream. Yeah. I would love to be in a girl band. I think that would be a blast. Yeah, no, it, that's, you've got some good stuff together. Like, <laughs> I think, I think that you can't go wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So is there anything else coming out that you can talk about or anything you want to plug in at this time? 
Well, I don't think I can say um, what I've recently recorded, but I can say and encourage people to watch the dubcast of Snafu season three. Um, so that's on high dive right now. The first four episodes came out, um, you know, this past week, which is awesome. And more are coming um, that we've been recording. So yeah, and, and I'll be on the journey with everyone, kind of seeing where what happens with these three. Yeah, so big fan right here. I just want a good conclusion. So we'll see how that goes. Yes, and I'm hoping so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, please all stay together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same here. Mm -hmm. All right, so last question. Is there any Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, any of that social media for fans to contact you yet? Yes, definitely my Twitter. Cause um, yeah, I, social media is so crazy. I, I feel like Facebook might die soon. I don't know about anybody else, but I just feel like I'm, I'm not really feeling Facebook these days, but Twitter, um, I just got Twitter this year really um to connect with you know and and thankfully i've gotten to connect with you and and a lot of other vas and fans so um definitely my twitter which is my name um but there's another melissa milano out there so it has my middle initial so i am at melissa c milano um and uh yeah and i'm getting a little bit better at it in the beginning twitter i i couldn't really figure it out <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, a lot of people use this, but I don't really, I didn't get the whole tweet, retweet hashtag, but I'm learning and I'm getting better and I'm loving, I'm loving like getting to see people's like reactions, especially with this dubcast right now. Like I'm looking forward to um, seeing people talk about that more and, and some of the other stuff we have coming up and, and then also with us being in, in quarantine, like a lot of like the Sentai at home is happening pretty soon. And um, so with everything being so digital, I'm, I'm very happy to be on Twitter now. And so please follow me and tell me your thoughts. <laughs> all right. Well, there you have folks. Follow her on social media. Keep up with all the updates right there. So more shows will be coming out. So keep an eye out for Sentai and High Dive with many more announcements to come. Yeah. And thank you so much for having me on. I'm so glad we finally got to talk. Yeah, it was an honor to finally get this uh, interview again. It's been like, I was just on here almost five years, kind of trying to get this arranged. Happy that we finally got it, you know, yeah. done. The patience finally paid off. <laughs> yes, yes, he was so patient, guys. Um, so major props to Christian. You're awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Melissa, for this interview. And uh, thank you to our viewers for tuning in for this edition of the Ohio Guys here. Thank you all, and we'll be seeing you in the next uh, video. Bye, everyone. <laughs>